The SCORE and SARA pipeline operations in Nexus 2 can be used to find the functional hip joint centers and the rotation axis of the knee joints. In order to use the SCORE and SARA pipelines, you need to have a minimum of three markers on each segment, but we'd suggest having more for redundancy. We have five segments, which are the pelvis, the left and right thighs, and the left and right tibias. These segments in different combinations will make up the four joints. Just like plug-in gate and other biomechanical models, in order to use the SCORE and SARA pipelines, we first need to calibrate it, and then we need to process it. The range of motion needed to calibrate the hip joints is referred to as the star pattern. And this includes hip flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and circumduction of both hips. As we are dealing with the hip joints, the segments that we need are the pelvis, the left and right thighs. As we can see here, I still have some gaps in my left and right ASI markers. I'm not actually too worried about these because these gaps are small. I'm also not gap filling as that would introduce made up data into the algorithm, which isn't good. If the gaps were larger, I would actually capture a better trial. So to reiterate, when calibrating SCORE and SARA, definitely make sure that all the segment trajectories are correctly labeled, but don't fill gaps. The segments needed to define the axis of rotation of the knee joints are the thighs and tibias of both legs. The range of motion required for the knee axis of rotation is simply knee flexion and extension. As we can see in this example, my subject is squatting. However, if your subject isn't able to squat, they can alternatively lift their leg off the ground and swing the knee by flexing and extending the knee joint and doing the same thing for the opposing leg. In this trial here, we can see that the ASI markers are missing for large portions of the trial. This isn't that bad as we're not using the pelvis segment to define the knee joint. If the thigh or tibia segments had gaps that big, I would capture a better trial. Again, make sure that the necessary segments are properly labeled, but don't fill gaps. For score and SARA, it doesn't matter what order you calibrate the joints. While I have captured the knee after the hip, I could have just as easily captured the knee range of motion first. Also in this example, I have captured two separate calibration trials, one for the hip and the other for the knee. I could just as easily capture four separate trials so that it's one joint per trial, or alternately, I could capture all four range of motions in a single trial. The big caveat with this is that you will have to build your pipelines accordingly. For the rest of the video, I will be working with calibration and dynamic trials that contain range of motions for all four joints in the same trial. And so I will be building my pipelines accordingly. Now that we have captured the appropriate range of motion trial, reconstructed and labeled it, and ensure that all trajectories are properly labeled, we need to define our segments. And to do that, we are gonna use the Calibrate OCST pipeline. OCST stands for Optimum Common Shape Technique. And we're going to choose five of these pipelines for each segment that we're going to create. I'm also going to rename these pipelines so that it will help me remember which segment is which. These names that I've written here are purely placeholders. Now, by highlighting the pelvis, I need to give it a name that will actually be used in the pipeline. Finally, I need to select the appropriate markers. To do this, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, draw a box around them, and turn the macro off underneath the markers we can see here that the markers have been populated in the list. I'm going to repeat this step for my other four remaining segments.
I'm also going to save this pipeline and name it calibrate score Sara. Now, when I execute these pipelines, we can see that we have a new axis dedicated to the pelvis and so on and so forth for my remaining segments. Another property we can alter is the align button, which positions the coordinate system using the longest distance on the object as X. And we can see that by hovering our mouse over the align button. So in this example, I'm going to check all of my align buttons for all of my segments, just to show you what happens. And we can see here that the coordinate systems move. I actually don't want to use this for my rest of my score and Sara video, so I'm going to turn the align button off and rerun the pipeline. And we can see here that the coordinate systems have moved to the center of my objects. Now that we have defined our segments using the Calibrate OCST pipeline operations, we are going to use the Calibrate Score and Sara pipeline operation to define the hip joint centers and the axis of rotation for the knees. In this example, because we have four different joints, we're going to be using the Calibrate Score Sara pipeline four times. I'm also going to rename these so I can keep a track of which joint is which. The properties that I need to adjust are the parent name and the child name for each individual joint. As this is the left hip that I'm working on, my parent name is going to be the pelvis, and the child is going to be the left thigh. Now these names that I've written in these boxes have to be the same as the names that I've put into the OCSTs. I'm going to do the same thing for my remaining joints. For my knees, the parents are going to be the thighs and the childs are going to be the tibias. Remember to keep the names of the segments consistent with those that you've written in the Calibrate OCST pipeline operations. For the hip joints, I am going to leave the SARA axis unchecked. However, for the knee joints, I am going to check the SARA axis. Now, when I run my pipeline operations, we can see that the hip joints are being created, as well as the axis of rotation for the knee joints. Once we have run a Calibrate Score SARA pipeline operations, we can open up the subject and we can open up the model outputs and see that we have the modeled markers, which is our hip joint centers and our knee joint centers. And we also have the OCST bones. And that is how you calibrate the score SARA pipeline. Now that we have finished calibrating our score and SARA, we now need to use score and SARA on a dynamic trial. In this case, I have loaded a walking trial. I've reconstructed it, labeled it, and made sure that there are no gaps, as we can see here.
To create this dynamic score in SARA pipeline, I have created a new pipeline that's empty. I'm going to save it and call it dynamic score SARA. This time I'm going to go to the data processing available operations heading. And the two pipeline operations that I need are the process OCST and the process score and SARA. As we have five segments, I'm going to use five process OCST pipelines. And like before, I'm going to rename these accordingly to represent each segment. Again, the names that I've used here are purely placeholders. The names that actually have meanings are written in the properties. Now, I'm going to add the process score and SARA pipeline operations. As I have four joints, I'm going to use this four times. As before, I'm going to rename these to reflect the joints. I'm now going to give the parent and child segments their appropriate names. As before, these need to reflect the Calibrate OCST pipeline operations and the names in the Process OCST pipeline operations. As I'm dealing with the left hip, this will be the pelvis and the left thigh. With the right hip, the parent will be the pelvis and the child will be the right thigh. With the left knee, the parent will be the left thigh, and the child will be the left tibia. The right knee, the parent will be the right thigh, and the right tibia. A point to note is that these names do not necessarily need to reflect those of the segments of the VST. However, they do need to be consistent with what you're doing. Now, if I execute these pipeline operations individually, we can see that the coordinate systems of the segments are being created. And if I scroll forward and change my view, we will see that the hip joints are being inserted, as are the axis for the left and right knee. Now that we have modelled outputs, including the modelled markers and the OCST bones, we can plot these. So I'm going to close my tools pane to give me more space, and I'm going to split my screen and change it to graph view. This allows me to, for example, plot my left thigh, left tibia, SARA data, which we can see here. We can also plot, for example, the pelvis OCST bones.